So I figured I would share with you the four skills that got me to being a six-figure business owner. Now, not all of these I was born with, by the way. Not all of these came natural to me. And we live in this really, really stupid culture. I call it the born this way culture. Like that Lady Gaga song, Born This Way. That's what we think of everything. We think, oh, that person's good at sales. He was born that way. Or that person uh, has is in shape, must have good genetics. And, and obviously it's the opposite, right? I'm not good enough because my genetics are bad, because I was born this way. I don't have a business sense because I was born that way. And it is absolutely poison. It is false 99% of the time. It is a complete lie and it holds us back because we think, oh, I'm not good at business, so I can't even get into it. When the truth is that nobody's good at business. You get good at business when you practice doing business over a long period of time. So one of the best things that you can do from a mindset perspective is to get rid of this born this way crap and see everything the opposite. No matter how unlikely it seems, have the belief in your head that I can develop this. You know, I'm not outgoing. Okay, I can develop it. I can become outgoing. I'm not good at sales. Okay, I'm, I can develop it. I can get good at sales. I'm not in shape. I can get good in shape. Right. If you believe that it is accessible to you, then 99.9% .9 of the time you'll be right and it will be accessible to you. If you believe that you were born that way, you're going to be stuck forever. So anyway, what are these four high income skills that got me to six figures? Well, number one is called copywriting. Copywriting. What copywriting means is writing in a way that is persuasive. It's writing text in a way that gets people to want to start reading, want to continue reading, and then want to take the action, whatever action you want them to take. So, you know, depending on where it is, it might be to opt into an email list, it might be to sign up for a newsletter, it might be to buy a product, like it's a whole bunch of different applications, but it's basically it's writing to persuade people to do some action. And copywriting is, is pretty much the complete opposite of academic writing, right? So whatever writing you learned in high school and in college probably taught you a lot of bad habits that you're going to have to get rid of if you want to be good at copywriting. The reason being because when they teach you how to write academically, oftentimes they're teaching you to use a impressive vocabulary. They want you to use big words and seem sophisticated. They want you to, to use long paragraphs, right? Whereas copywriting, you want to do the opposite. The, the whole point of copywriting is to seem as conversational as possible and make it as easy to read as possible. Because when you're writing something for an audience of people who don't know who you are or who have a hundred different things they could be reading, you want to make it as little mental effort for them as possible. So when you're copywriting, you want to use the smallest words that you can, right? You want to use a um, this is the rule of thumb in copywriting. You want to use a, a fourth grade vocabulary or lower. And it's not because your audience is stupid. I mean, maybe they are, you know, depending on the audience. But generally, it's because people like to use up as little mental energy as they possibly can. And this is something that's actually biological, because the more you think, the more your, your body burns sugar. Right. And so the more you think, the more food that you have to eat. If you look at they, they've done studies of chess grandmasters when they're playing a chess game, they will burn an enormous amount of calories, even though they're sitting there, they're not moving because their brain is so active. And so what are, we are biologically wired to do is to try to minimize the level of effort that we're spending on any given thing. And so if you are going to spend a lot of effort, a lot of mental effort on something, it better be really, really worth it to you. Whereas if you're looking at like an advertisement, let's say that you've never seen before, you're not going to want to spend very much um, mental energy on that because you don't know anything about it. You're not really invested in it. Right. And so this is something that's a little bit difficult to get your head around. It's a little bit difficult to get used to. It's not something that we're normally taught. And especially if you have a lot of training on writing from an academic standpoint, it's, it's a little tricky, but you, you have to unlearn the bad habits that you were taught in school, um, which, you know, teaches you all sorts of bad habits. As I've talked about a lot of my channel, school is not meant to set you up for success. It's meant to make you a cog in a machine 
that does your function and nothing else. So anyway, that's uh, skill number one is copywriting. Next high income skill is speaking. Speaking. Now that might not sound so uh, important right at first because, you know, not a lot of people are, are really speaking on stages and giving addresses to big auditoriums and that kind of stuff. But speaking is really big because of video um, and audio, right? Podcasts are really big. Videos are really big. If you think about how, how much content have you consumed, like how many blogs have you read and how much time have you spent reading books and reading text-based materials versus videos and podcasts? Most people these days spend a lot more time consuming video and audio content than they do reading text. So while you do need to know the copywriting because you want to write text in your ads and your headlines, and even when you create a video, your video needs a headline, right? If you want somebody to click on the video, you have to have a compelling headline. So the copywriting is essential, but the speaking is essential as well. And this was something that was really hard for me to get started because I've, I've always been kind of awkward and insecure. And for a large portion of my life, I was really ashamed of my voice. Um, I used to get, I mean, I was, I was a really quiet kid. And so I think I never even really developed my voice very well, so it kind of sounded weird. And then when I was in middle school, my voice broke, uh, like my voice cracked. I would, it would just like, I don't know how to, I can't even do it anymore, but, but you know, going through puberty, my voice was kind of going up and down and people made fun of me like crazy. Like the kids in school, they called me shrooms, uh, which was, cause my, my name was Shoop. And middle school kids at that time were just obsessed with anything to do with drugs. And they figured because my voice sounded so weird, it must be because I was doing magic mushrooms. So they named me Shrooms, uh, which stuck for several years. And I was super embarrassed. And, and so I've like coming, speaking was very difficult for me. Of all the, the skills on the list, this was the most difficult. I was definitely not born that way. I had to learn it. And you know, if you even go on my YouTube channel, you go back to like my oldest videos, you can see how rough it was. Um, I had to learn this through, through practice and through learning, just like anything else. And I love that expression that everything that you ever dreamed of is on the other side of fear. Because it's funny, when I look back on this, my, my first big success in business was when I created a live webinar, right? I, I did, not only was I creating a video like I'm doing now, where if I screw up, which I have, I've already screwed up like a hundred times making this one video. Um, if I screw up, I can go out and edit out, I can go back and edit out all the bad parts. Uh, whereas when you're live, you can't do that. Like everybody's going to listen to all your screw ups. So anyway, I signed myself up to do a live webinar. I was scared, definitely, but I did it anyway. And that was my first big business success. And it brought me almost $30,000 the very first month. So needless to say, I'm very glad that I was willing to face my fear and do it anyway. And also I figured out a few tricks along the way, like a few hacks that make it a lot easier to do speaking and to record video if it's not something that comes easy to you. So um, if you're interested in learning what those are, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make a future video all about those. So uh, second high income skill is speaking. The third high income skill is data analysis. Data analysis. Anybody who's been following me for a while probably already knew that I was going to say this one. This is how I made my, my career, basically. When I was still working jobs, I worked as a data analyst. Um, I was making almost $100,000 at one point just from salary working as a data analyst. So like that gives you an idea of, of the value of this skill that companies are willing to pay somebody 100000 bucks. And, you know, I've seen data analyst roles go up to like $150,000, which is for a job is pretty darn good, right? And because it's so, so important to any business. So if you're the business owner or you're helping another business owner, either way, this is crucial. And the reason that developing the skill of data analysis is so helpful to business is because it lets you figure out what's working in what's not working. And it lets you figure out what's working, what's not working a lot faster than if you did not have this skill. So 
If you don't understand what I mean by that exactly, let me give you an example. So let's say that you have a, um, a business process, like a sales process that's a, a five-step process. So you have like step one to step two to step three, step four, step five. Handwriting's getting horrible here. You get the idea. So um, Basically, let's say you, you create this whole process. So maybe you have an ad to a landing page, to a thank you page, to a webinar, to a, a sales page, something like that, right? That'd be kind of a typical sales funnel. Well, let's say that you create the sales funnel, you start running some ads to it, and then it fails. You don't make any money. Well, what do you do? Well, if you don't know how to analyze data, then you just say, oh, this process doesn't work and you throw it all away, right? Whereas if you do know how to analyze data, you say, okay, let's look into this. Which step is failing, right? And it may be that when you look that step one and step two and step three are working perfect and then step four is failing. And so now you can say, okay, I'm not gonna just throw out the baby with the bathwater. I'm not just gonna throw out this whole thing. I'm just gonna fix step four that's the step that's not working then you run it again the next time and it works brilliantly and you make a ton of money right if you did not have that data analysis skill you would not have known where to um where to tweak where to optimize and so you would have just thrown out the whole thing or you would have just repeated it again and lost more money and ended up demoralized and, and figured oh i don't i'm not good at this business thing i just have to stop so your chances of being successful are so much higher and will happen so much faster if you have this data analysis skill. And, and you know, there's a bunch of other ways you use that too. Like let's say that you wanna run a bunch of ads at the same time. Well, you need to analyze the data to figure out which ads are working the best, which of them are not working. And if you can do that, then you can continue running the ones that are working, shut off the ones that are not working, and your performance just gets better and better and better. Or you can use data analysis to analyze your audience, right? To do market research, which is a huge part of what I teach my clients. So they're not just jumping in blind with an idea that they think might work. No, they're actually validating it with real data so they know that it's gonna work or they know that it's not gonna work before they go and spend any money on it. So high income skill number four, data analysis. <clears throat> so high income skill number three, data analysis. High income skill number four is putting on other people's shoes. And so I'm just gonna say other people's shoes. And my handwriting continues to deteriorate here. But what I mean here is being able to look from the eyes of the person that is in your audience, the person that is your prospect. Something that I'll ask my clients is, let's say that they just created a new ad and they want my opinion on it. Well, I ask them, okay, well, if you were your prospect, so you're some person that's just seeing this ad from some strange person you've never seen before, would that ad get your interest? Would you click on that ad? Would you listen to that ad? Or would you just skip it as fast as you possibly can? And a lot of the times the answer is, no, I wouldn't listen to the ad, I would skip it. And so if that's the case, then you can be pretty sure that your ad is not going to work. So you want to put yourself in other people's shoes when you're looking at every part of your business, right? Whether it's an ad, whether it's a landing page, whether it's a webinar, whether it's a sales page, um, even when you're fulfilling, right? When you're delivering a product, you ask yourself, okay, what is my target client or what is my actual client in this case going to think when they view this product? Is there anything in there that's confusing? Is there anything that's that's going to be difficult for them? Is there a better way that I can explain it? Right? Because it's really easy to get stuck in your own head and think, okay, well, for me, it's obvious, right? For me, I understand it. So I can just explain it in high level terms. Whereas your client might be somebody that's totally new to the idea and you have to explain it a different way to your client than you would have to to yourself. So the more that you can make a habit, just get this ingrained into your thinking, what are people gonna think of this thing? You know, are they gonna think that it's confusing? Is it going to be hard to believe? Or is it boring? You know, people don't really wanna stick around if it's boring. Or even is it insulting? I had a, um, a guy who was looking at his, his opt-in page the other day and he had this headline, it was for a weight loss offer, and he was saying, 
how to lose 20 pounds in four weeks without giving up pizza and ice cream. And I thought about that, like if I'm putting myself in the, the audience's shoes, so maybe I'm a person that's overweight and I've been trying really hard to lose weight, but nothing's working. And then I see this headline, like it, it sounds like this guy is just accusing me that I'm just sitting, sitting on the couch, shoveling down pizza and ice cream and, and like that's my life. So if I'm in this situation, I'm probably going to be kind of insulted and probably I'm not going to sign up for his free training because he's already pushed me away. Um, yeah, another problem with that is it just kind of sounds unbelievable. Like, OK, you're saying that I can I can just shovel down pizza and ice cream all day and still lose weight like that. That's just hard for me to believe. So instead of saying without giving up pizza and ice cream, he could say, without giving up your favorite foods, right? Which is far less insulting and doesn't seem so unbelievable because it could be that the person's favorite foods are, are not quite so uh, fattening as pizza and ice cream. It just sounds better and still it's a little bit on the unbelievable side, so we'd probably want to add to that a little bit, but that would be a massive improvement. And you probably noticed that like all of the examples here, all of these top four skills, are all related to marketing, right? They're, they're all marketing related. Copywriting is a particular skill under the skill of marketing, right? And I didn't want to give you, oh, just learn one skill and that's marketing because there's so many things that are under marketing. You know, there's content marketing, there's how to create logos and how to do search engine optimization. There are gazillion different things you can do under the banner of marketing, but these are the four that have been absolutely key to my success. And marketing is so incredibly important because business really just comes down to two things, right? There's you create the product, you sell the product, right? Or you deliver, you sell the product and then you deliver the product. That's it. There's marketing and delivery, marketing and delivery. And so if you can get delivering the product down, then the only thing that's left is marketing. And it's, you know, it's really easy to deliver a product if you choose a product that's easy to deliver, right? Which is why I show people how to create online courses where they just teach people to do stuff that they already know, right? It's like the easiest product ever and it's worth a lot of money. And once you create it, now all you have to do is worry about marketing. And so really 95% of the business is just marketing. And even if you don't have your own product, really 95% of the business is just marketing. And even if you don't even have your own product, right? You can always do marketing for other people's products. So marketing is the most little understood and the most valuable skill, in my opinion, that there is. And you know, there's a lot of people that go to college for marketing to learn from people that don't know jack about marketing. So chances are, if you run into somebody with a marketing degree, they're probably not very good at marketing because they learned from the academic version of marketing, which is also the useless version of marketing. And if you have a, a marketing degree, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm saying like this is, what you really want to know. And if your school didn't teach you that, then you got to learn on your own. And there's plenty of resources for you to do that. So if you're serious about learning these skills and increasing your income, then check out this video all about how to double your income. And of course, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you're the first to get all my new videos.